My science project title is "The Behavior of Cheating Fathers." That's what my son announced during his sixth-grade class presentation, where my husband and I were attending. When our son's name was called, he confidently walked to the blackboard and pinned up a large poster. The room went silent for a moment, then erupted in murmurs. Undeterred, our son began presenting. I chose this topic because on December tenth, right before winter break, I saw my dad walking arm in arm with a woman I didn't recognize. I noticed more suspicious behavior after that, so I decided to research my own dad. From the back of the room, I stared at the poster, filled with numerous photos and detailed research findings. I realized it all: my husband's late nights. And his distance from our family, he had been cheating. I was seething inside. I wouldn't stand for this. I shot my husband a glare and demanded, "What is this about?" He looked back, pale and trembling. Stay with me to see how this story unfolds. My name is Emily, a forty-year-old working mom. I've been with the cosmetics company I joined right out of college. I've recently been promoted to a manager position, and I'm finding it fulfilling. My husband's name is James. We met 14 years ago through a mutual friend. He's set to inherit his father's business and currently works in sales. Despite his occasional recklessness, he's promising and gentle, drawing me closer over time. After dating for two years, I happily accepted his dreamy proposal. Emily, let's build a happy family together. Ah,、uh, James. Once we are married, I'd love to have kids soon. Hopefully, a boy as an heir. Always in a rush, aren't you, James? We then began visiting our parents to announce our engagement. My rural folks loved James. Then it was time to meet his parents, Samuel, a company CEO, and Barbara, a housewife. Their lavish home was intimidating, making me nervous. Don't be tense, Emily. Barbara comforted. We are delighted to meet you. She serves us tea, and seems like a very sweet lady. When James expressed our intent to marry, they were overjoyed. A family will make you a real man, James. Treat Emily well. Despite his stern appearance, Samuel was kind. I am glad to be joining such a lovely family. I replied, and Barbara warmly agreed. They even supported my decision to continue working post marriage. It's an era where women excel in their careers, Samuel pointed out. On our way home, James said, "It seems my folks really liked you. Your parents are wonderful. Dad is usually strict, but what scares me more is Mom. When she's mad, it's terrifying." I was surprised. Really? We better not upset her then. Don't worry. She seemed fond of you. Following our lavish wedding, we began living in the apartment Samuel gifted us. With James often away due to work, house chores largely fell to me. Juggling my job and housework was challenging, but modern appliances made it manageable. Thankfully, he helped out occasionally, so I wasn't too frustrated. A year after we got married, I discovered I was pregnant. Here in the news, James was ecstatic, jumping for joy. Oh my gosh, Emily! I'm going to be a dad. Thank you. My in-laws were just as thrilled as he was. Take care of yourself, Emily. We'll do whatever we can to help. With teary eyes, my mother-in-law tightly grasped my hands, while behind her, my father-in-law couldn't hide his joyful smile. I genuinely felt grateful to have them as my in-laws. My parents live in the countryside, farming, so I don't see them often. During my pregnancy, Barbara took such good care of me. Thanks to her support, 
my pregnancy went smoothly, and I gave birth without any issues to a lovely baby boy. Seeing the relief on the faces of my husband and in-laws, I said to Barbara, "Would you like to hold the baby?" Taking the baby, she exclaimed with delight, "Oh, how adorable!" Have you already decided on his name, Emily? We discussed it and decided on Noah. What a beautiful name, little Noah! Nice to meet you. I'm Grandma Barbara. Now let's say hi to Grandpa. At that moment, my husband and I truly felt surrounded by familial bliss. Twelve years have passed since then. And Noah is now in sixth grade, though he's become a bit distant compared to when he was always following me around, saying "Mom, Mom." He's grown into a kind and intelligent boy. We've maintained a great relationship with my in-laws. They've been understanding of my work commitments, even looking after young Noah on my behalf and frequently checking in with me. They adore him. Sometimes spoiling him a bit too much, and he seems to love them in return. However, one thing has changed: my relationship with James. We still live together, occasionally bickering, but generally getting along. However, over the past year, he has become unusually distant towards both me and Noah. James, having climbed the corporate ladder to become a sales director and potentially the next successor, has been increasingly absent from home, studying and busy with work. He rarely speaks to Noah and usually just drinks and goes to sleep at home. This has been the routine for a while. As our son entered his last winter break in elementary school, I suggested to James, who came home late. How about we go on a winter vacation? It would be nice for Noah. James, looking bothered, replied, "I'm swamped with work. I don't have time for that." But you've been like this for a while, and I feel bad for Noah. He's at that age where he doesn't want his parents around, right? Just let him be. He retorted dismissively and quickly went to sleep. I felt both disappointed and lonely with his response. The next day, as Noah helped me with the dishes, I told him, "I'm sorry, Noah. We might not be able to go on a trip this year, but we can visit the museum or something. Okay? It's okay, Mom. You just focus on your work." He replied nonchalantly. I wondered if James was right about him preferring the company of friends over parents now. But you have your project, right? Let me know if there is anything I can help with. I've already decided on my research project topic. I want to focus on that. I see. Well, I won't bother you then. Good luck with it. Though he still had some childlike traits, I felt proud of how mature he had become. Throughout the winter break, James was busy with work, and I was tied up too. So Noah spent more time at his grandparents. He seemed engrossed in his assignments and research, staying in his room most of the day. However, we made sure to share dinner together every evening and chat. I believe our mother-son relationship remained strong. Occasionally, I noticed him looking at me as if he wanted to say something, but I decided to wait until he was ready to talk. And just like that, winter break came to an end, and after a little while, the last open class session of elementary school approached. I decided to ask my father-in-law to have James take the day off from work so he could join me for the class visitation. James seemed hesitant and a bit annoyed, but upon my urging, he entered the classroom. The main event for the open class was for each student to present the independent research they had conducted during the break. One by one, the kids presented their findings, like 
observation of plants or their own handmade crafts. As I watched them with a smile and clapped, a thought struck me. Noah had seemed really engrossed in his independent research, but what was he going to present? He confidently stood in front of the chalkboard and pinned a large poster to it. The title of my research is the behavior of a cheating father. The classroom went silent for a moment, and then suddenly everyone began whispering. Regardless, Noah calmly read out the contents of his poster. First, I'll explain why I chose this topic. On December tenth, just before winter break, I saw my dad walking arm in arm with a woman I didn't recognize. I noticed other suspicious behaviors, so I decided to research my own father. From the back of the classroom, I stared at the poster. It was filled with various photographs and densely written research findings. It all made sense to me then. The reason why my husband has been coming home late and had been so distant was because he had been cheating on me. I was seething. This is unforgivable. I immediately turned to my husband and demanded, "What's this about?" He looked pale and trembling. The teacher quickly interrupted Noah's presentation, and even though he pleaded to continue, the teacher told him he couldn't. From the back, I called out to my son, "Let's go home, Noah." I promise I'll listen to your entire presentation, Mom. With that, we left the classroom under the curious gazes of others. In the parking lot, I sharply told James, who was turning pale and trying to get into the car, "You can walk home." I drove straight to my in-law's house with my son. What happened, Emily? Why isn't Noah in school? Barbara exclaimed. While her husband looked on with a puzzled look, to them I said, "Please take a look at Noah's research." I had him spread out his poster on the table. I hadn't been able to see it from the back of the classroom, but the contents were incredibly detailed. It included sections like "Observing My Father's Day," with notes like. Leaves for work at 8:30 a.m. Leaves office around 10 a.m. with a new female coworker. They head to a cafe and flirt. Return to the office after lunch. Leave again at 1:30 p.m. and go to a hotel. Then dinner at a restaurant. There were photos he took himself, even one of his father coming out of the hotel. My in-laws were stunned. Oh my goodness! We should confirm this with James. After they reviewed everything, including sections on identifying woman A, recording my father's weekend activities, differences in my father's behavior at home and with A, and text messages between my father and A, Samuel finally said with a shaky voice, "Noah, this is very well done, and that's commendable. Thank you, Grandpa. But Noah." Why didn't you tell your mother about this? Noah, with a quivering voice, responded, "I thought it would make Mom sad, but I couldn't stand it. I found online that if I wanted to accuse someone, I needed evidence, so that's why I did this." Tears streamed down his face. Holding him tight, I said, "It's okay, Noah. Thank you. I promise I'll protect you." I'm stronger than I might seem. I'm sorry, Mom, but I can't see him as my dad anymore. I nodded, took him home, and made him dinner. Later, when I received a call from Samuel, I headed back to their house. In the living room, James sat with visibly angered Samuel and his mother, who was also as mad. Spread out on the table was Noah's project. Now that we are all here, James, explain this. Samuel said in a low voice. This, this is a misunderstanding of Noah's part. I confronted him. 
A misunderstanding, you say? Then what about this photo of you entering the hotel? Are you saying that Noah just made this up? That's, uh... Oh, and this lady here, Abigail Walker. She's a new employee in your department at work, huh? I even have screenshots of your chats. I love you, Abby. Can't wait to be with you tomorrow. We're going to get married, Abby. Then you'll be Mrs. CEO. Aw, oh, isn't that sweet? Please, just stop. He finally admitted, defeated. All right, all right, I admit. I cheated on you. It's pretty obvious when it's laid out like this. I can't believe Noah found out. Holding his head in his hands, he looked up. His father informed him. I heard from your deputy manager. Everyone in the company has known about your affair with the new girl, but they were too scared of your position to say anything. What? Using the company car for your rendezvous during business hours? Unbelievable. You're fired, and so is she. James pointed at himself in disbelief. Even though I'm the next CEO? Who said I'd let you take over? Shame on you, you disgraceful son. Dad. Suddenly, his mother, who had been silent till now, slapped him hard across his face. Ow, mom, what the hell? You disgrace. Apologize to Emily and Noah right now. We are cutting ties with you. Never show your face again. She continued to slap him multiple times until her husband intervened. All right, that's enough. True to her reputation, James was most afraid of his mother. With a face flushed from the slaps, he staggered over to me. Emily, I'm sorry. Please, if you forgive me, everything can be fixed. Please forgive me. With all the strength I had, I shouted back. Are you out of your mind? You didn't just betray me, but also left a scar on Noah's heart. We are getting a divorce. I'll be claiming alimony and child support. So brace yourself, you jerk. Go to hell. Samuel threw James out. Our divorce was finalized smoothly, thanks to the evidence Noah had collected. I demanded alimony and child support from him in a lump sum, which he quickly paid, especially with the pressure from his parents. As promised, his father really fired both James and his mistress. I also claimed compensation from the mistress, but since she had no savings, her parents paid on her behalf and took her back to the countryside. I heard that she and James broke up over the money dispute. James, having lost all his savings, his job, and being disowned by his parents, eventually vanished. Rumor has it, he's now living in a rundown apartment in the neighboring state, taking up odd jobs. I don't feel sorry for him one bit. He got what he deserved. As for me, I'm still living near my in-law's place with Noah. Our relationship with them remains unchanged, and they often spend time with Noah. He has declared that he'll take over his grandfather's company, to which he responded with evident joy. As I move forward, I'm grateful for the unwavering support from my in-laws, and look forward to enjoying every moment of my son's growth.